good morning church um well i hope all of you are fine and i thank god for giving me yet another opportunity to bring his message uh, this morning well uh, all of us i think uh, especially me we are getting bored of this lockdown isn't it <laughs> well some of us are enjoying working from home but i really feel you know i feel the longing to come into the presence uh, literally into the church into the church building yes i know that we are a church god has called us to be his church but sometimes i really feel i want to be in his sanctuary literally in the church you know worshiping with all of you together and i hope that day comes very soon well a lot of things are happening around us a lot of chaos lot of uncertainty and lot of death unfortunately there's lot of death that is um, going around us and um, if uh, no death due to this pandemic is one big issue well on the other hand um, i think there are a lot of you know artificial deaths to if i can call them uh, well i'm talking about suicides we've been hearing a lot about you know uh, people committing suicides and you know killing themselves or whatever uh, so i have recently come across an article in the uh, paper or on the net i don't remember where it was said that uh, suicide has become uh, am i able are you able to see the screen as i share it with you all fine okay uh, so uh, in this um, report that i have come across uh, it has reported that suicide is the second leading cause of deaths in india and uh, it was estimated that almost 50% of deaths in the last few months uh, <clears throat> are because not because of covid but because of suicides uh, in india and this scenario is not just limited to our country a lot of other countries in the west and also in the european nations have reported an increase in the deaths due to uh, suicide now all of us are aware why this is happening you know there are a lot of law, uh, unemployment lot of people losing their jobs you know there is failure to fulfill financial commitments uh, and even for some idleness and boredom are also reported to be the causes of suicide well whatever is the cause the underlying factor behind this harmful nature that we see is a feeling of worthlessness worthlessness and depression you know many people are going through this as they are locked down and locked up in their houses they go through this feeling of worthlessness and depression now talking about depression depression is a mental disorder uh, this may result uh, there are many factors why it can be there but depression may also result uh because of stress substance abuse or even due to loss uh, actual or perceived losses which an individual goes through in his or her life now these losses that we may usually come across uh, is ending a romantic relationship now recently we've heard about this uh, shushant singh rajput the famous film actor who reportedly died because um uh, you know he had a, a you know a separation from his girlfriend so ending a romantic relationship or a close friendship it may be because of financial problems losing a social position and in children and youngsters it may be because of academic failure bullying shaming or humiliation well whatever may be the reason of depression hopelessness and lack of self worth is the underlying factor in all the above situations hopelessness and lack of self worth uh, i'm not good enough 
I am not beautiful enough. I am not intelligent enough. I am not rich enough, or uh, I am not slim enough. Whatever we have is just not enough for us. Now it is very easy for us human beings uh, to start feeling unworthy of about ourselves. We may often think that we are not good enough for ourselves, or even for our friends, or for our family. That is when the feelings of rejection and loneliness, and the feeling that there is uh, no one to whom we can relate to or reach out to, creeps in. You know, sometimes the individual even feels that there is nobody to help him or care for him or love him. Uh, not even God. The individual may feel that God is uh, very distant, uncaring, unreasonably demanding, and uh, sometimes may even feel and question if God really exists, or does God really care for him? Now, these may be the questions that may linger around in our minds or in a person's mind when he is depressed. But let us look at what the scripture really has to say about, about us. Now, in the scripture that Linda has read for us from the chap Isaiah chapter 43, uh, we see that God is calling his, nation, uh, his people, the nation of Israel, to himself again. And he talks to them on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Now, uh, start, beginning in verse 1, God says, this is what the Lord says, he who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name, you are mine. God calls his people his own. Now, dropping down to verse 4, uh, this is the key verse which I want to concentrate today as we uh, learn about God's love in our life. Verse 4 reads as, since you are precious and honored in my sight and because I love you. These are the, this is the part of the verse that I want all of us to look at very carefully. God calls us that you are precious, that you are honored, and he says that he loves you. Now, you are precious, you are honored, and you are loved. We may think that we are worthless. We may think that we are not cared for. But what beautiful words of affirmation God speaks to each one of us. He calls us precious, honored, and loved. Uh, as we learn more about this, more about this, how God feels about us, let us look each one of these words with a little more um, detail. Now, when you have something precious, what do we usually do with that? Now, when, uh, when we have something precious, all of us ladies, we know how we take care of our precious ornaments or you know, special saris or dresses that we have. We treasure them. Uh, we take care of them. We safeguard them. And sometimes, or I should say in the case of ladies, most of the times, we display them with pride. God does the same with us. He takes pride in us just like a parent whose child is standing there on a stage to recite a poem or to perform a dance. Now, uh, whenever, when I was preparing, uh, uh, no, uh, preparing uh, for this message, when I came across this, I couldn't but stop think how, uh, what joy it used to be to go to Harihara Kalabhavan to watch Jessica or Nathan, you know, do their part in the, on that stage, especially when they are, you know, very small, little young kids, you know, nursery, LKG. Just to look at them on the stage is such a joy for a parent. I'm sure all of us do enjoy that, right? When we look at them there, we really, you know, treasure them. We are so proud of them and it's such a joy for us. And I'm sure God also must be feeling the same for us. You know, whenever he looks at us, when he calls us precious, he must be really enjoying the sight of us 
there on the stage, the stage of the world. Well, when we look up uh, for this word precious, because here God is calling the nation of Israel his precious. So when we look at this word precious, uh, in other places uh, throughout the world, Old Testament, where it has been used, the word precious have, has been used to describe, you know, precious stones like diamonds and rubies, things that are very hard to get and very beautiful to look at. So God is calling you precious. God is calling you and me precious, as precious as diamonds and other precious stones. In another place, uh, the word precious has been used to describe the stones that have been used to uh, construct the palace of King Solomon. Now, when King Solomon, uh, which we can read in uh, 1 Kings chapter 7, when King Solomon was constructing his palace, you know, huge stones have been brought from uh, quarries, stone quarries, which were uh, very far from the place where the um, palace was constructed. So the stones were cut according to the measurement uh, uh, there, and they have been brought through the countryside, you know, on those difficult roads uh, to the place where the palace was being, con uh, was being constructed. Now, these were heavy, huge stones, some of them even eight feet uh, wide and you know five to six feet uh, deep. Now these stones uh, uh, required an incredible amount of work to be done on them because they were cut to specifications uh, in the quarry and they were brought to the place where it has to be used. So they, they, that needed a lot of precision and a lot of hard work. So there was a lot of investment that had gone into it to bring those stones to the place of construction. That was a huge investment. And they called those stones precious. And God today calls us precious because God is also building his church with a great deal of care. He's molding each one of us very, very carefully. Now, when these stones were brought to the place of construction, even though they have been cut, uh, you know, according to the specifications, uh, they had to be chipped and placed in the place where they are allotted to, you know, stay and hold up the palace. So, in a similar way, God is also working on us. He has made us, no doubt, but he still is working on us, chipping away those, those small projections that prevents the stone to sit in its place so that it can form the part of the larger church of, uh, you know, church of Christ. Now, these projections may be, you know, our pride um, or our anger or lethargy that we have sometimes in our relationships with each other and also with God. So God is constantly working on us. He's chipping away all those unwanted um, qualities from us so that we become perfect in his plan and that we would fit into the grand design of God's church. So that is what is, make, is making us more precious. As the stones that have been used to build Solomon's church um, palace is called precious, so are we called precious brethren because we are the stones that God is using to build his church. Well, this morning, brethren, as uh, we listen to his message, I don't know why God has revealed this to me, but maybe he's talking to you and to me. Maybe we are discouraged. We, are, we think that we are not good enough. Maybe we are lonely then this message is for you and for me. God says you are precious. God says you are good enough for him. Good enough for him to even go up to the cross for you and for me. Brethren, we are not driven by chance, but we are here by a purpose. You and I have an important role to play in God's grand design.
If you look at uh, Psalm, the Psalmist in the Psalm 139 says that um, you, for you have created my inmost being. I praise you because I am fearfully and, and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful and I know that full well. Now David here is saying that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes, brethren, we are wonderful creation of God. God has made you and me, and you and I are his workmanship. And we are wonderfully made so that we would fit into his grand plan. God not only calls us precious, but he has also called us honored. Now, I was wondering what honoring one means. We usually you know honoring means somebody who retires or achieves something. You know, you drape a shawl around him, you present a bouquet, and then you're done honoring uh, him or her. Well, I was thinking how God would be honoring us. He doesn't do all of that to us. Or when I looked up what it is to honor a person, I came across this very interesting statement by um, Krista Baer, uh, who's a chair coach. Now she says, honoring someone means to respect and to celebrate that person. It's about accepting someone as they are and appreciating them for who they are. Isn't that what God does to us, brethren? He accepts us as we are and he appreciates us. He treasures us. Uh, Krista Bear further goes on saying uh, the various in the various ways you can honor others is to treat others with respect, be understanding, be patient, overlook mistakes, forgive, show compassion, listen, encourage, appreciate your differences. These are some of the ways in which you can honor others. Now, when I looked at uh, these things, these attributes, I felt this is what exactly God does to us. He understands us. He's patient to us. He's kind. He's compassionate. He encourages and appreciates us the way we are. God honors us and calls us his friends. Like um, if you look at in John 15 verse 15, uh, Jesus says, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. Jesus calls us his friends. Now, a friend is somebody whom you think is your equal, someone who thinks like you and someone who's there for you at all times. And here, God, the creator, he calls us friends. That is a beautiful way of honoring us. He has not only called us his friends, but he also calls us his children. Now in John uh, chapter 1, if you see verses 12 to 13, to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become, the, become children of God. Children born of God. God has accepted, accepted us unconditionally. He chose us. He has chosen you and me and have not rejected us. God chose us while we were still sinners. What an honor to be called children of God or friends of God and to be special to him that he chooses to lay down his life for you and for me. Brethren, you are the apple of God's eye. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Whoever touches you, touches the apple of his eye. Oh, what an honor it is to be so special, to be so loved, to be so precious to the king of the universe, a God. The third thing that I would like to um, bring to your notice today is that you are loved. Uh, in the scripture portion that uh, Linda read to us today, uh, in the first verse, it goes on to say, do not fear, I have redeemed you. 
now that's one of the many reasons god loves us um because he has redeemed us the word of god's love these words of god's love in isaiah 43 uh, were not spoken in a time where the israelites were perfect children to god no a perfect nation who loved god no it was not like that Uh, it was not at all made easy for god to call him his precious and love now this was the time when israelites terribly disobeyed god they have lost their freedom and their land uh, if you uh, go back to chapter 42 and see in chapter 42 isaiah chapter 42 you will see that some of the phrases god used to describe uh, israelites in the previous chapter um, was blind towards him disobedient and even calls them foolish now israelites have disobeyed god they have been robbed and plundered by their enemies and they have turned their backs to god and uh, they have you know made alliances with pagan kings and started serving pagan gods and it was not at all easy for god to call them loved and precious at this time you know of of the timeline god was really angry well not the destructive type of anger but you know the anger of someone who cares now after all this god still calls them loved i think that is what is being a wonderful parent now when he has called us his children he simply didn't call us his children but as a real parent now if you have a child who is doing very well in school you know always getting a grades good in sports good in behavior a uh, perfect child you can ask for so it's always wonderful to go to parent teachers meeting with such a kid uh you know and you know that your the class teacher is going to rave about your child and you're going to come out beaming with big smile out of that classroom now but if you have a kid who gives the teacher a very hard time and you know that there would be other parents waiting for you getting mad at you for what your kid has done to their kid now that is when love is tested that is when the question gets harder am i still going to be there for my child as parents our answer is going to be yes god sees himself as a parent as a redeemer as a member of the family who's going to be there at the times of your need well in one of the most incredible stories in the bible that you come across is that of prophet hosea now all of you know that prophet hosea uh, hosea had a wife who betrayed him having an affair after affair and finally she leaves him altogether she becomes a prostitute one day he found uh, his ex wife up for sale in slave market used up and helpless but hosea redeems his wife he brought her out of slavery and he took her home again and he cared for her and he loved her that is what a god does does for us that is what he has he did for us we were slaves we were lost we were disobedient but he still loved us he has paid that huge price for us Jesus died on that cross to redeem us from our sins. He is a parent, a teacher, a husband, a redeemer. He has invested so much in us each one of our lives that he calls us his precious. Let brethren, let us never take God's love in life in our lives for granted. So, why does God love his people? it is because he has created us he has called us to be his friends his partners in his work no matter what we are he always loves us just yesterday i was talking to one of my friend's mother 
my friend uh, lives abroad with her family she works there uh, so her mother is in her 80s now uh, left here alone with her son now uh, i know this uh, this friend of mine you know we been childhood friends so i we grew up together literally i know this man um and my friend's brother he has always been that kind of kid a problematic child never went to school never really studied uh, indulged in all kinds of you know uh, mischievous things and you know uh, some nuisance cases so much so that his mother had to go to police station sometimes to bring him back home now he was married uh, but unfortunately he didn't change so his wife and his children left him now that man lives alone with his mother my friend's mom who is in her 80s now now when i called her just to find out how she was like she was telling that she is okay and then she's carrying on and then how in her 80s also she had to take care of a child a grown up son who is now in his 40s or maybe close to 50 he still she still takes care of him cooks for him cleans and maintains his house in spite of being rejected in spite of being disobedient she said what to do ma i'm his mother nen amman gada i have to take care of him his wife may leave him his children might have left him but i'm still there nen amman gada i have to take care this is what is a um, love of a mother just yesterday she was sharing this with me on the phone just like a parent jesus loves us he has loved us when we are unruly he has loved us when we are unlovely he has loved us at our darkest he is so committed to us that he keeps working on us chipping away all those rough edges that prevents you know others coming close to you that prevents you being part of god's grand design every one of us brethren have a place in god's grand design and because of this each one of us is precious well i was just uh, a couple of weeks ago i was watching this um, film called lion king all of you i'm sure might have seen this uh you know where this uh, lion uh, simba the prince simba um was made guilty of killing his father and made to leave his pride land and go and live somewhere else this uh, simba the little lion forgets that he is the son of a king uh, forgets that he is a prince and that he is a lion he makes friendship with two funny characters a wild boar and a mere cat and they all live so happily not knowing who they really are this uh, lion which is supposed to be hunting and you know being king it starts eating honey and um, locusts and lives bugs and lives like uh, any other animal when times come when time comes for simba to return to his pride land uh, he denies that he is uh, somebody who's worthy who could ever go and take the place of his father but uh, i'd like to like all of you to look at this next small clipping that i am going to play for you all where simba is made to realize who he really was and that is when he goes back to his pride land accepting his responsibility uh, may i at this time request praveen to play that uh, small clip for me after which we will i will conclude Rabin Joshila you mean yeah uh, Joshila would you please stop sharing all the time Yeah I did I stopped sharing I 
I think the volume has increased. On my side, it is full. That's not my father. It's just my reflection. No. Math presents counting to ten. Okay, class, let's count these munchkins. Kindly unmute yourself, Joshua. Thank you, Praveen. Uh, can I share my screen again? Yes, please. Well, thank you for sharing that uh, for us, Praveen. <clears throat> Brethren, as we have seen, uh, when thoughts and feelings of failure or uselessness or disappointment comes to our mind, Take those thoughts captive and make them obedient to Christ and replace them with hope. As we have seen, let us not forget who we are. Remember who, who you are. Look harder, in, harder into yourself and he lives in you. You are the son and you are the daughter of the true king. Say to yourself that I am God's child. I am God's friend. I am precious, I am honored, and I am loved. We have a part to play in God's grand design. Let us not forget and be encouraged that God loves us. Thank you, brethren. <laughs> 